Wrapping up here on Take Command with Logan Paulson. I am Craig Hoffman. So that's Jaden Daniels. Let's get to May and McCarthy. Let's start with Drake May because it's the antithesis in a lot of ways. Uh, you do not have the trust level. You do not have the... Uh, you're, you're never plus in terms of the talent around you compared to what you're playing against because th this is another part of this evaluation that we can touch on here with Drake is even though Jaden Daniels played against better defenses, he always had the better talent. Like he was playing almost in an NFL offense against an SEC defense from a talent right. standpoint, where Drake May was playing on a bad ACC offense against ACC defenses. So yes, SEC defenses, greater than sign, uh, ACC defenses, but the relative talent that yeah. you're playing with versus against, Jaden had it easier, which is, to me, isn't even a shot at Jaden. And people then to be like, oh, well, how are you going to hold that against Jaden? To me, it's just an explainer for some of the difficulties that Drake may had. But he did have them. He did have those spots on his tape where the footwork is all over the place. And he didn't overcome some of those circumstances. So how do you try to make sense of, hey, it's there sometimes. Uh, and there's all these reasons that make sense that uh, it's not there, the others. But at the end of the day, the results are the results. Yeah, and, and he's and he's really tough to watch because again, like he's he's like the ultimate tease, you know. Like he, yeah, he'll show you something that is only he can really do in the class, right? And like like I've mentioned this a million times, and I and I encourage everyone to go do this. Watch his big time throws. It's there's a cut up of it online, um, and it's just like these are NFL throws. These are NFL windows. This is NFL timing. And I, I want to retract that timing element a little bit because it's not always timing. He's got this like playmaking moxie, like very Farvian in that kind of way, right? Where everyone says like you know Caleb Williams does this great job of being a creator at the position, and I think. Drake May does it the second best in the class. The problem is Caleb, when you watch him, he's so consistent with his feet. He's so consistent with his timing, like on the easy stuff. Like he hits, he gets on base and he shows you ability to consistently just get on base. And that's why he's going to be the first pick in the draft, right? Because he can yeah. create, he's got a tremendous arm, but he also can do the easy stuff with relative consistency. And then you look at Drake May and the high stuff is high. But and, and you've watched a ton of Drake May film, and you can attest to this. Like, it's maddening to me when you miss a five yard out and the guy's wide yes. open, and you and you turf it, and it's a bad miss. Like I understand you you throw it a little bit arm, and the guy accelerates and can't quite get. I get it. But when you throw the ball over the dude's head, when you turf the football, when we're missing throws, or we got a slant and we throw it high, guys to jump up and get it, and there's like running room, you know, in like cover two, like get through there and get going. Like that stuff is maddening to me when you watch it because. At the NFL level, like I think Kirk Cousins is a great example. Like Kirk does not miss layups. He takes layups. He takes what the defense is giving him and he makes you pay. If you cannot do that at a fundamental level, I have a lot of reservation. I, the, the high stuff is great. Like I love it because that, that ultimately, like that's those are money downs. That's third down. That's red zone. That's backed up. That's when you got to make a big play. That's what you need to see. But to function at the offensive level, you got to hit the basics. And I think that's the thing about him that I find really con like disconcerting is you see, like, I think, for example, you watch the Minnesota game, which is maybe unfair because that's probably his worst game. But like, he, he's, he's feeling pressure that's not there. The, remember the pat thing I was telling you about? He's patting the heck out of the football. He's scrambling when he doesn't need to. He's running into pressure. He's still making plays, but that, that polish that you get with Jaden, right? Where I got a good feel in the pocket, the ball's out on time. It's not there. Now, he's then you go to like Virginia and he's throwing the ball over the yard. He looks great. But there's sections where he doesn't quite get it done the way it needs to get done. Or you watch Miami and Miami's heating him up and he doesn't have a protection answer. Now, is that his fault? I have no idea. But all of those, th those things are big things to me in terms of yeah. just doing basics, getting on base consistently that I, I have a really hard time with him in terms of the evaluation. This is why I've come off of him a lot because I think I try to spend a lot of time thinking about like, what are we actually doing here? Right. Yeah. What is it that we actually want when we're, when we're doing the show during the season and we talk about good quarterback play, what does that look like? And it doesn't look like the stuff that he, like the stuff that we like, he doesn't do well, but this is the problem when you watch him is you go, he misses the, those throws that we're talking about, these layups. He turfs one. He throws the ball over a guy's head. Um, he gets picked because he, he leads a guy too much on a slant. The ball gets tipped and, and, and is picked off. And you're like, I can't draft this guy. 
And then he comes back and he makes the sickest throw you've ever seen. And you're like, yeah. I can't not draft this guy. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just a matter of what do you like? And I think the other part that's really hard with him and this is, I think you hear more from like the Nate Tices of the world and the, the folks who have access to the all 22 on a consistent basis with him is their offense is apparently terrible. Yeah, like whatever they were running at North Carolina just did not give him answers on a consistent basis. And so schematically, he's playing in a deficient way where LSU gave Jaden or gave Jaden Daniels uh, answers uh, a lot. I will say this about Jaden Daniels too, though. Like, there's times where he doesn't have answers, but dude makes plays. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he like elevates the offense, and I think, and to be fair to Drake May, he does elevate the offense also. But there is, I think, that's a great point. There, you need you need to make sure the quarterback has an answer, and he doesn't always have right. that at North Carolina. So right, and so there's times where like Nate talks about how the one of the things he looks for in a quarterback is like, are you doing side to side, like sideline to sideline read? Are you oh, just, yeah. do you have no idea where to go with the football? And so you start left and then you come all the way back, right. And you're doing left and you're just like, is somebody open somewhere? And that's like right. a telltale sign because no offense is designed that way. If the quarterback's eyes are doing that, that is a bad sign for processing, except for in North Carolina's offense. They ask him to do that sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you're just like, Oh, that's, that's not very helpful. That's not very quarterback friendly. And so when we talk about the footwork and some of that stuff and, and it coming back to trust and confidence, uh, you understand why Drake May doesn't have it. And that makes it really hard to evaluate because then you have to go like, okay, well, if we were able to set him up in a more confident space, could we get the most out of his talent? And if so, we should probably draft him because he'll be awesome. Yeah. And if not, then we're going to have a disaster on our hands and he's going to probably not just not be a top 10 guy, but he could bust and, we, and we're back in quarterback hell or back in quarterback purgatory in three, four years. And we haven't done much winning in the meantime. I think where I come down, um, which is going to shock people because, again, people think I can't, like, I'm a Drake May guy, for instance, is, like, I kind of come off him because of that where I just, I would rather someone that I can trust to make layups, and if I had to rank them today, he's the guy I feel least comfortable drafting while also knowing that is the biggest risk because he might wind up being the best of the bunch. Yeah, I think that's a tough thing. It's like you go back to that scout thing we talked about in the first segment. It's like, you know, if you can do it once, you can do it. And like, he can freaking do it, man. And I think that's <laughs> the thing about like when you watch like, you know, that that binary yes, no for the NFL. Like Jaden Daniels, I have I have real questions about can you make consistent NFL throws? Like that's a question I have. And again, he's got a good arm. He's got a quick release. His fundamentals are great. But Drake May, I don't have that same question because of his ability to kind of like laser stuff in there find the, the the position for the football like small windows tight windows and again this is encompassing all the baggage we just talked about with him the long kind of languid release like the more space in the pocket required to throw the football that's all there but the nfl throws that he does make are incredible and you're kind of like he can do that and he's going to be asked to do that at the next level and so that's a yes for him and it's a maybe for Jaden. And that's where this gets so confusing. Because everything else with Jaden is better. But they didn't ask him to do anything overly complicated in college, right? In terms of these types of throws we're discussing. So I think that's where I have a really hard time with this. Because there's a lot of stuff that makes you go, nope, don't want that. Nope, 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 nope. But then you say, all the, the maybe the most important thing is like these NFL-style windows, these NFL-style throws. And Drake's got him and he does him well. And so you say, well, that, that's why to me, he's a perfect candidate to say, hey, you got to sit for a year because like we're going to get these mechanics cleaned up. We're going to get you playing correctly. We're going to do the Aaron Rodgers treatment and you're going to become out like gangbusters, you know, like the million dollar man and be awesome. And I think you got to look at the teams. So like and again, the question to, to fans I have is like, do you think Washington could do that? I know Peter said yes. I don't know if I agree with Mariota kind of in that role, but um, but yeah, that, that's kind of my thought on Drake May. Yeah. And honestly, my response to that very quickly is I don't care about 2024's record. I care about the, where you are in three years. And if, and if you have to play Marcus Mariota this year, like, am I psyched about it? Is that going to make our show fun? Is that going to make watching them as fun? Right. Like, obviously not selfishly. I hope the rookie plays because it's more to talk about, but if I'm the team, if I'm the GM specifically, I want what is best for my team in the next three to five years. And if that means the the guy, the kid sits and Marcus Mariota is playing a lot of football this year, then so freaking be it. But yeah. that also brings us to the, the split the baby, if you will, 
and that is J.J. McCarthy. Um, because McCarthy has a lot of the NFL stuff on tape. That's almost all he has on tape uh, because of the low throw volume and, the, and what Michigan asked him to do because they were constantly more so often asking him to turn around and hand the ball to Blake Corum. Um, and also they were up in a bunch of games and, and all of those things. But he does have a lot of physical traits. And I think that is the thing that is undersold with McCarthy is when you want the physical talent, like we kind of said, he's got B plus everything. He might have a minus on some of this stuff. Like yeah. but to, there are, I don't know about elite traits, but like really, really high level traits when it comes to his speed, when it comes to his arm strength. And so I think then it comes down to that processing element. And what are we actually getting in JJ McCarthy as a prospect here? What is his ceiling? And, and also from that mental processing standpoint, could that be the thing that separates him and actually does give him the potential to be one of the top guys in the NFL and thus worthy uh, of a number two pick without much second guessing? Yeah, and this was, you know, when you watch his throws, I mean, this is just maybe very telling. So, you know, like when you watch the cut up of throws and runs for Jaden Daniels, it's an hour and 45 minutes. When you watch the one for Drake May, it's an hour and I think 47 minutes, right? When you watch the one for J.J. McCarthy, it's 45 minutes. <laughs> It's sign it's it's under half, right? It's it's incredibly short compared to what those guys did because of what they asked them to do in Michigan. And the thing uh, the thing about it is I, it's so hard for me to watch him because I love him so much. Like I love cuz and it's and it's a and it's probably because of the NFL offensive background, but there's NFL throws. The way he's manipulating coverage players like with his eyes, like, you know, they run like a CO concept. So out in the corner, I think I've mentioned this before, but I love it. I love seeing this from the quarterback. He looks to the flat. The guy matches the flat. He throws the corner like that ability to understand what the defense is doing, what I can do to manipulate them. Like that's good. That's excellent stuff, right? Like the throw that he made against Alabama where it's like they're running drive and the guy's crossing the field, the tight end's running the dig, and he throws it right, like literally right at the middle linebacker's face. And the middle linebacker matches the drive route because he should. You know as the quarterback that's supposed to happen. Whizzes right by his ear. The guy doesn't even see it. Tight end catches it in a perfect window. Like that is NFL big time throw stuff. And so... For me, like, I love that. And it's probably because, like, it looks most like the NFL. Like, when you watch him at the line of scrimmage, he's checking the different runs. Like, Harbaugh's notorious. Like, I was talking to Colt McCoy about this when we were playing. So, this is, like, 2013, probably. And he was saying, oh, they have, we, have, we have something called perfect. Like, that's the play call. It's perfect. And what it is is it's four runs, and the quarterback has to get you in the right run based on front and coverage. And so, like, you got to be a smart son of a gun to execute that offense. And you can see there's times where he's at the line of scrimmage getting people locked in. And so, you know, his tests, you talk about giving the test that was given you, his test definitely was probably the most conducive to NFL football. It's like the most translatable. And then when you watch him run, like I think he's a better athlete than Drake May. I think he's more dynamic. I think he's got a natural playmaking ability. I forget what game it was. Sorry, I probably should have made a note of it. But like, He's skating the pocket. He's remaining a thrower. He pushes the football down the field and just does all this stuff. And you're like, and again, he has bad games. I forget it was like Indiana where he throws all those picks. Like he has bad games, no doubt about it. But like he just seems to have that kind of NFL panache already. And again, this is a projection game, you know. So Jaden Daniels is a better athlete, probably a quicker release. Drake May's probably got a bigger arm, um, maybe more natural playmaking ability. But in terms of running that offense at Michigan, like it was pretty slick by him, you know? And like, yeah. again, like the, the leverage throws they got to make, it's, it's tough. It's tough. So. Yeah. Um, and, and my, my pushback to play devil's advocate here yeah, play, um, would please. be like, are we just lacking imagination? Because, oh, well, here it is. It's <laughs> NFL. It's NFL caliber. Well, we yeah. should just take that guy. And it's like, that's not how this works all the time. Just because he did it in college. And it's the same thing as Jaden. It's the same thing as Drake to an extent where we're asking this, be if they haven't done it yet, can they do it? Yeah. With, with JJ, he's done it. Now can he do it at an even higher level and to what level? Because, you know, there is a volume control with him, right? Like, I talk about this all the time with, with the NBA, right? Especially this year's Wizards. Like, Denny Avia, uh, now I'm going to go complete Wizards here, but Denny Avia is a very good basketball player. And right now, he is the Wizards' probably best or second best player. And there is a reason why they're not winning any games. That's not to say Denny Obvia is bad. It's to say that if Denny Obvia is your best player, 
you are going to have trouble winning NBA basketball games. And so, yes, he can average 30 or he can score 30 points on a given night, but you are much better off with him taking the number of shots and having the ball in his hands at a level where he's scoring 18-ish points and there is someone better than him who is trying to score 25, 30 points a night. You're going to win more games that way. And so with JJ, you're going to now ask him, instead of having to make six throws a game, he might have to make 10 or 12. And what does that mean in terms of your chances to win? So when you up that volume, can you maintain the efficiency and that is the big question for him. And then you you juxtapose that question and that answer with, okay, Drake and Jaden haven't done the things that we've seen JJ do by NFL standards, but can they? And yeah. that's those answers. If you can answer those questions correctly, congratulations, you win the game. Yeah. Uh, you know who they should take at number two. Um, and by the way, those are all dynamic questions and answers, depending on your offense, your development staff, your environment, who they're playing with, yada, yada, yada. It's a great point. And again, like I went back and watched uh, Justin Herbert from a couple of years ago. I went back and watched uh, Josh Allen just to see like what kind of prospects they were. Cause you know, they were, and you know, like Herbert, you know, like I think there's, you know, you see the arm town, but he's kind of robot. And so like, even with him, who's a guy that I like a lot as an NFL player, like I didn't really see, like, I didn't really see what he became at the NFL level. Like it was there, like, you know, like now in hindsight, you're like, Oh, like th this is why, why you right. love it. And same thing with Josh, like Josh Allen was a crazy man playing football. Like, Holy yes. cow. You're like, this is like untenable. And then he became one of the best quarterbacks. He had so, like a sub 60% completion percentage. In college. Yeah, it, was nuts. it was wild. And he's just ripping this thing. His fundamentals are terrible. He's trucking linebackers. He's like, this is fun to watch, but this is insane. But I think the point there is, is like the bills believed in, in Herbert. Right, they're not in in, uh, in, in Allen. Allen yeah. Right, they let him. They let him kind of go through all of his growing pains for like two and a half years, and when a lot of teams would have moved on, they saw something in him. He turned a corner and started playing good football. And I think like that's ultimately what you're talking about here is like, can this team, the Commanders, support one of these players enough, specifically Drake May, Jaden Daniels, so that they can make these plays when they need to make them, and and it might be a year and a half from now. It might be two years from now. But if you think one of these dudes can get there, like you got to take the shot on him. I think the thing that's so enticing about JJ is it's there. You're like, he's done it. I've seen him do it. He's got a good arm. He's got a playmaking ability. Like, take it. But to your point, like what happens when he's like got to be the guy? Now, you know, I, I, Dan Quinn's a smart guy. He said this a bunch of times. Like, we're going to play good defense. We're going to run the football that's going to insulate a young quarterback regardless. And so, I don't know, maybe you want those guys that the throws are so good. Like the good throws for him are so NFL-y. It's like you could you could like it, like juxtapose them. Like they're so like that. The problem is that there's not he's only doing it like like less than half the time those other guys are. And so again, the question becomes, do you think Jane Daniels can add a little bit of complexity? Do you think Drake May can clean up his footwork and clean up his fundamentals? And do you think J, uh, JJ can handle a larger larger share of the offense? And like you said, if you have the answer to that, you should be making more money than you're making right now because every NFL team would want to talk to you about it. Right. Uh, and then, of course, there's all the stuff that we don't know, the interviews, et cetera, oh, et cetera. Yeah. Um, which, as we talked about at the top, matters a lot. All right. Uh, if you're sick of us talking about quarterbacks, uh, good news. There's only two and a half more weeks of it uh, because the NFL draft is coming up on April 25th. I will be there for the first round in Detroit, which is really exciting. Uh, have the Hoffman Show live from Detroit on the 25th. Of course, we have plenty more coverage here on Take Command between now and then, including our chat Wednesday with Mina Kimes, which you'll hear Thursday morning. Our chat Friday with Dane Brugler, which you'll hear Monday morning. And we got a couple of other awesome things on the agenda between now and the 25th. A couple more mock drafts as well. Uh, so we are excited to do all of that. For Logan Paulson, who you can follow on Instagram at Logan underscore Paulson 82 and check out uh, on the Commander's YouTube page as well for all the stuff he's doing over there. I am Craig Hoffman. You can listen to on the radio four to seven daily on the Team 980 and we'll see you next time on Take Command. Thanks for watching this clip of Take Command, which has a brand new home. That's right. You can watch on YouTube at the Team 980. You can also listen to full episodes in the free Odyssey app, which is now enabled with Apple CarPlay. So we'll just, you know, follow you around. <laughs>